Hello everyone, my name is Anima De and today we are going to do a topic in chemistry of class 9, matter in our surrounding. So the name of the topic is matter in our surroundings. Now it is a very interesting chapter because it gives us an understanding of what matter is and what is the nature of the matter that we see around us. Now the question is what is matter? When you look around yourself you would see that there are various kinds of things you can observe in and around. It can be a drop of water that you see, the plants, then animals, the human beings, car, any sort of vehicle, any living, non-living, everything that you see around you, they are actually nothing but matter. Now what is matter? Usually till so far you have learned that matter is something which occupies space, has volume and also has mass. Is matter all this? What is its nature? What is its kind? What are its properties? Its characteristics? This is what we are going to study today. Fine. So let's start with it. Matter, as I told you, that matter is something that occupies space and has mass. This is what we had understood about matter so far. Whether it is in the gaseous state or in the solid state or it is in the liquid state. Now there has been a lot of time, right from the ancient period of time, there had been a lot of research work going on. There were some scientists, some philosophers, some thinkers who thought that matter is something which is made up of the five elements that we see around us. Now what are these five elements? It is, they considered it as air, water, fire, earth and sky. All these things mixed together composed of matter. This is what their thought was all about. Gradually it came into existence that no, matter cannot be just taken all these things into account as and explained as matter. Matter is basically either it can be something which is continuous or it is fragmented. Now what do you mean by there were two schools of thought that considered matter to be either in a form of a block as a whole sum or there was another school of thinkers who thought that matter actually consists of small particles. Now let's analyze it further and see what is it all about. Now when we talk about matter, matter as I told you that there are two ways that we think about matter. Either we discuss about the physical characteristic of matter or we discuss about the chemical characteristic of matter. In later classes, in higher classes, we are going to do the chemical aspect of matter. Now we are more interested into the physical aspect of matter. That what is matter? What are its physical properties? Now every time when matter was analyzed, when there were a lot of experimentation what was done, it was understood that matter actually consists of very small particles. As I told you that the physical nature of matter was one school of thought th considered matter to be a block, a continuous block, whereas there was another school of thought who thought that matter is composed of particles. And we do have, when we carry out various experiments, we find that the block nature of matter was discarded later on and it is that matter is in the form of particles. So it is the particle nature of matter that was accepted by the thinkers in the ancient time and gradually with lot of experimentation we have found that yes matter exists in the form of very small particles. Let us show an activity to show the particulate nature of matter. Now let's see what is the method for carrying out this activity. Fill 3 fourth of the beaker with tap water. Mark the level of water in the beaker with a marker pen or we can also use a strip of brown tape. And after that pour some common salt in the beaker. And we stir the content of the beaker with a glass rod or a spoon. And we record the observation. Now let us try to answer the following questions. 
the first question can be uh, question number one can be what happened to the common salt initially two what happened to the common salt on stirring the third question what happened to the level of water in the beaker after the activity is over fourth where does the common salt go so the answer can be the common salt settled at the base of the beaker as if it were a continuous form of matter second on stirring the common salt disappeared that is it dissolved in water this dissolving or disappearance of common salt in water suggests that common salt is not one continuous state of matter. Instead, it is made of extremely small particles. The water breaks down the common salt into so small particles that they are no longer visible to the eyes. The answer to the third one, the level of water in the beaker does not rise or fall. This suggests that particles of common salt get dispersed in water. This also suggests that there must be some hollow spaces in water. This implies that water by itself is not continuous but is made of extremely small particles which are not visible to the eye. And the answer to the fourth question is the extremely small particles of common salt position themselves in the small spaces between the particles of water. This also accounts for the fact that the level of water does not rise because the particles of common salt do not displace it but occupy the small spaces in between the particles of water. So I hope this gives it an explanation for all the questions what we had put up after carrying out the activity. Now, now that we know that the matter that we see around us exists in the form of particles, we also have to understand that what are its characteristics, what are the characteristics of matter. So, the, let us understand today and study about the characteristics of matter. Now, for the characteristics of matter, the first characteristic of matter is that it is made up of very small particles. Now, when we talk about very small particles, the question is how small the particles are. So, the size of the particles, the size of the particles are very small. This is the first characteristic. And the question, question is how small are the size of the particles? For that, let us do another activity. Now let us do another activity to show extremely small particulate nature of matter. What is the method to carry out the activity? We take in the test tube number 1, drop one small or crystal of potassium permanganate. Take out the test tube from the test tube rack by placing your thumb on its mouth, stir and the contents vigorously. Now observe the color of the solution formed with the help of a dropper. Take out a few drops of solution from test tube number 1. Now pour one drop of the solution in test tube number 2 and stir its content vigorously by placing your thumb on its mouth. And observe the color of the solution. Repeat the procedure for test tube number 3 to test tube number 6 and observe the color of the solution in each of the cases. And you would see there is variation of colors. You must have noticed that the pink color of the solution is deepest in test tube number 1. However, the color of the solution becomes less and less pink in test tube number 2 to test tube number 5. Till in the last test tube 6, the pink color is hardly visible. Why does this happen? It is because the particles of potassium permanganate decrease gradually from test tube number 1 to test tube number 6. 
From the above observations, it can be concluded that the particle of matter are very, very small. They are so small that they are not visible to the unaided eye. Now, let's go to the next concept. The second one says that the particles, the particles of matter have space between them. That is a very interesting fact. As we had already proved that particles, the matter is not as a continuous block. It is rather made up of particles and we have also understood till so far that these size of the particles are very very minute. Now another important characteristic of matter that we see, the particles of the matter that we see is that they have got space between them. Now how can we understand that? Very simple. Let us show an activity to show the particulate nature of matter. Now let's see what is the method for carrying out this activity. Fill 3 fourths of the beaker with tap water. Mark the level of water in the beaker with a marker pen or we can also use a strip of brown tape. And after that, pour some common salt in the beaker. And we stir the content of the beaker with a glass rod or a spoon. And we record the observation. Now let us try to answer the following questions. The first question can be, uh, question number one can be, what happened to the common salt initially? Two, what happened to the common salt on stirring? The third question, what happened to the level of water in the beaker after the activity is over? Fourth, where does the common salt go? So the answer can be, the common salt settled at the base of the beaker as if it were a continuous form of matter. Second, on stirring, the common salt disappeared, that is, it dissolved in water. This dissolving or disappearance of common salt in water suggests that common salt is not one continuous state of matter. Instead, it is made of extremely small particles. The water breaks down the common salt into so small particles that they are no longer visible to the eyes. The answer to the third one, the level of water in the beaker does not rise or fall. This suggests that particles of common salt get dispersed in water. This also suggests that there must be some hollow spaces in water. This implies that water by itself is not continuous but is made of extremely small particles which are not visible to the eye. And the answer to the fourth question is the extremely small particles of common salt position themselves in the small spaces between the particles of water. This also accounts for the fact that the level of water does not rise because the particles of common salt do not displace it but occupy the small spaces in between the particles of water. So I hope this gives it an explanation for all the questions what we had put up after carrying out the activity. I hope this concept is clear to you. Now let's go. Next concept comes with the third one that the particles of matter, the particles of matter are continuously, continuously moving. Okay, what I mean to say is that the particles are not stagnant or they are not static. They are continuously in motion. Now, why did I use the word random? They do not have any specific direction. They keep on moving from one place to another along with the availability of the space. More the space, more is their motion. Now this is possible to understand. Like for example, suppose we I take a beaker again. Fine. And again, some half the beaker is filled up with water. After that, what do I do? I take, add few drops of, drops of ink and I leave it aside. Now, as we leave this ink aside, we just add a few drops of ink into 
the solution and leave it aside. Now what will happen to it? After some time you would find that the color of the solution changes, the color of the water changes slightly and takes on the color of the ink. Now how is it possible? Because if the particles did not move, then we should have expected that the ink drops would have just settled and remained as it is. But because the ink is made up of very small particles and these particles definitely must be in motion due to which these ink particles kept on moving from one place to another. And by doing so, it started coloring the entire water into blue coloration. So this activity actually gives you an indication that particles of matter are not static. They do not stand or they are not stagnant. They keep on moving along with the availability of space. More the availability of space, more would be the movement. Now this is in case of liquid. Now for in case of uh, gases, the same thing can be said. That suppose somebody has sprayed a perfume has used deodorant in the next room, you don't need to go to the next room to get the smell. You can stand where you are and gradually the smell keeps on coming towards you. This is an indication that the particles of the matter keeps on moving from one place to another. It does not stand where it is. It keeps on moving from one place to another. And how? They are in continuous motion and that to random. Now, these examples of the gases, the smell of the deodorant or the perfume used by a person in the next room coming to you or your mother cooking food in the kitchen and then the moment you enter into the room, you get the aroma of the food, your favorite food that she has cooked and with the smell of it, you just tell mama, definitely you must have cooked this. So, these indications are because these Observations are because the particle of matter are continuously moving and it is only because of this movement of the particle that you could smell the perfume smell or you could smell the aroma of the food your mother has cooked even from a far off distance. It would not have been possible if you would if the particles were not moving if they were stagnant. Fine. Another important thing that you need to remember here is that the movement of the particles depends upon the temperature. What I mean to say is that suppose this same activity of ink is carried out with cold water and hot water. That means if I take a beaker which has cold water all right, below the room temperature and maybe I take another beaker which has water at a higher temperature. Maybe the temperature maintained here is 20 degrees Celsius and this one is maintained at 80 degrees Celsius. So we have water of equal capacity of equal volume in both the beakers. Now to it what do we do? I add two drops of ink. In both the cases we add two drops of ink and we leave it aside. Now after a few minutes what you would observe that the beaker one in the first beaker where the temperature was 20 degrees celsius the ink has spread somewhat it has spread slightly whereas the beaker where the temperature is 80 degree or at a higher temperature the spreading of the ink has happened at a more intensified manner the question is what has influenced why do we see two variable observations in one with a lower temperature and one with a higher temperature. The reason is that the particles which are there at a higher temperature in this system, the particles have more kinetic energy. That means they have more energy because of heat, they have got more energy to move from one place to another. Due to which the mixing, intermixing of the ink and the water particles happens at a faster rate. Whereas that which is at a lower temperature, the particles are at a lower energy level. Their kinetic energy, that is the energy possessed by particle due to motion is less. That's why the intermixing of the ink and water is happening at a 
slower phase. Now after few minutes you would find that the one with 20 degrees Celsius the intermixing will happen less whereas the one with in a higher temperature the intermixing of the two liquids will happen at a faster rate. So here you can understand that why and how the temperature influences the movement of particles. Fine. So this intermixing of particles that we call is termed as diffusion. What is diffusion? Diffusion is a very important term and diffusion actually implies that the intermixing intermixing between particles, intermixing of particles is known as diffusion and we see that the diffusion in gas gases are higher than the diffusion happening in liquid whereas in case of solid it's very very less clear the diffusion happening in solid is very very less almost negligible so the diffusion that happens in the gas and the liquid is very high so with this continuous movement of the particles we also come into at conclusion, the diffusion is a process in which the intermixing of particles happens. Now this intermixing of particles happens at a faster rate when the temperature is high, whereas it happens at a slower rate when the temperature is low. Why is it? Because when the temperature is less, the energy available in the particles is less, whereas at a higher temperature, the kinetic energy or the energy possessed by the particles due to motion is high that's why they keep on moving at a very faster rate and thus they intermix faster clear okay next the fourth concept is that the particles of matter particles of matter have force of attraction This is the fourth characteristic of matter, that the particles of matter have forces of attraction. Now in order to explain whether the particles of matter attract each other, let us do an activity. Now let us do another activity to prove that the particles of matter attract each other. The method to carry out the activity. Take an iron nail, a small piece of wood and rubber band. Try breaking them by cutting, hammering or stretching. You must have noticed that rubber band is easiest to break followed by wood and iron. There are some forces which keep the particles of matter together. However, the strength of these forces varies with the kind of matter in a given substance. This force of attraction exists between the smallest particles of matter and is commonly called intermolecular force. Now in your textbook you have the first question given that which of the following are matter? There are many options given to you. Suppose the smell, the options are given as whether love is a matter, whether smell of a perfume is matter, or a hate is matter, almond is matter, cold drink is matter. Now how would you justify them? We know hate is a feeling. 
so definitely it is not a matter whereas alvent which you can count and it has got physical existence thus alvent is a matter gold ink is again a matter because it has got a physical existence right it has got volume it has got mass it has got some and it occupies space whereas when it comes to smell definitely this is not matter because smell is a feeling so you should be able to understand that matter has got physical existence it has got mass volume occupies space and it is also has got it also have made up of particles they are very very small right they are continuously moving and they also have forces of attraction okay so in this case you would say what are metals the metals would be chair definitely it is a matter then air it is matter almonds it is also matter then we have cold drink it is matter all right whereas the rest of them they are not matter because these are just feeling or the perceptions of the senses of organs okay next we come to the question number 2 answer to question number 2 now the question is that when you enter a room the hot sizzling food aroma reaches your nose the smell of the hot sizzling food reaches you several meters away but if it is cold food then you need to go very close to it to get the smell why is it as i already explained to you about one characteristic of matter that is the particles of matter are continuously in random motion and the rate of the motion depends on the temperature higher the temperature more would be the mo movement lower the temperature less would be the movement so this answer completely gets justified with those explanation i mean that when you take hot sizzling food sizzling food the particle the particles of the food they are at high temperature so because they are at high temperature the movement the movement of the particles because they are at high temperature the particles the particles are moving at a faster rate are moving at a faster rate okay at high temperature the particles are moving at a faster rate and thus we can get the smell of the hot sizzling food food even several meters away fine but what happens what happens to the cold food we need to go closer to it because the particles are not moving at a faster rate at all the particles are at lower energy level and thus we need to go very close and inhale take the smell to get inhale in the particles fine next we come to the question number 3 a diver diver is able to cut through water in a swimming pool what pro property of matter does this indicate you know what who are divers divers are those people who take a deep dive into the sea or the ocean fine now these divers when they enter into the water they are able to cut through it they are able to swim through it why is it you know why because as we already discussed in the beginning of the topic that the particles matter is not continuous it is in the form of particles and the particles have got space between them so because of the availability of space because because the particles have space thus thus the diver is able 
to move. Fine, because the particles have space, thus the diver is able to move. Okay, next we come to the fourth one. What are the characteristics of the particle of matter? Oh, you have already learned it. You just need to sum them up. What are the part? First thing we learned that the particles of matter is very small. Fine. Next, we learned that particles of matter have space between them. Fine. The next we learned that the particles of matter are in continuous, continuous movement. And the last is that particles of matter have attractive forces, forces between them. So we had learned these four characteristics. Arrange the following substances in increasing order of forces of attraction between the particles water, sugar and oxygen. So there are three particles which are given. One is water. Now first we need to identify what is the state that is liquid. Next is sugar. What is the state? Definitely it is solid. And the other one is oxygen. What is the state? This is gaseous. So what do you think would be the forces of attraction? Definitely solid is highest. Solid is highest means the forces of attraction in sugar is greater than the forces of attraction in water which is greater than the forces of attraction in oxygen. So the inter-particle space between the particles in sugar is the highest, then comes water, then comes the oxygen. Alright, clear? Which completely sums up our topic. So in the next coming topic, we are going to learn more about the matter and its nature. Thank you.